Hello, everyone. In today's review, I'm going to demonstrate a workaround to propagate a domain change to the ad hoc view. And the, this is just with the server version 7.5, but the approach are the same for all the uh, release versions. So we have, suppose we have a view, we call the user view. And this view is to simply display just for server user table from the repository database <laughs> using this domain, user domain. And suppose after we create, we created the view, user came back saying, oh, okay, they want to have some additional information from the table, or maybe they add a column to the table. They want the view to pick up that change. Okay, so first thing we need to do really is to make that fields available to the domain. So let's edit the user domain. In here, just suppose you know, they want to have this password in here. So now we have we add an additional column to the domain. So let's save the domain. And uh, just for the reference, I want to export the domain schema. As you can see, I have a schema before the change, and this is the new schema, modified schema. Let's call it mod. Just save this one for reference later. So now, after we change the domain, Let's look at the video to see if we can pick up the change. This view using the modified domain, but the new field is not shown out there. What happens? So this is the limitation of just for server web application. When a view is created from a domain, the domain field information is copied into a view topic. So it's hard coded in the ad hoc view. So even after the domain change, the ad hoc view is not changed. And there's no automated tools to help you to do it. Of course, you can basically create a new domain, a new ad hoc view using this domain. You should be able to pick up the view, but that is not what we want. You don't really want to recreate a view just because some changes to the domain especially if our view is very complex. So what can we do? So there's a workaround, but you have to put a little effort into it. So usually what you can do is to basically export this view. And then we can do some modification directly against the view repository content. Let's save to this location. All right, so now let's go to edit the view. So let's first, let's look at our domain, just for the reference. You can see this modified domain, we have this new field, while the original one we don't. Okay, this is the original one, this is the modified one. So the ad hoc view actually was using information from the original one. That's the reason they couldn't see this information. So what we 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 need to do is to modify the ad hoc video content. We can use a archive, any archive tool to inspect our view to get the topic. So just in case you don't know where to find this location, it's basically it's just the views. Okay. So once we locate the view, we can edit the topic. As you can see, the topic doesn't have that additional field that we just added to the domain. So what we can do is to simply add that one just to make sure we are using the correct name. The reason is sometimes what you see on the screen is the label that user can give any label. But ID is the one we need to use. In this case, they are the same, but 
especially for some complex table, the name probably is meaningless to a user than the display name. So we want to make sure we are using the correct ID. Okay, so the ID. And in addition to adding these fields to the query, we also need to define the fields attributes in here. So what we can do is to copy this block and make an entry. Okay, I want to use a tool to, to do a global change just to make sure everything is fine. So we can do a replace of email address to the password. Do a global change. This all email address. Let's do it. Okay, now there will change password, password. Now we can copy this entire block back to our topic in the editor from the archive. Okay, so now everything is okay. You want to save this. Save it out. So we can see in the archive, yes, we want to replace the content. So content. It's replaced. Let's make sure indeed it's there. So this is passwords and this is the entry for the passwords. Okay, good. So now what you need to do is to import this modified archive content back to the repository. What you need to do is to Go back to the uh, web browser. We need to import from here. Import, find our location where we, so this is the, this is modified. We don't really need to do anything, but the important thing is we want to make sure we want to update. Okay, import, good, successful. So now, our real should have the new fields. Sure enough, and then you can add to it. Well, okay, save the view. And save. So after this change, run it again, make sure. It's all there. So this is all I want to show you how to work around a limitation, feature limitation. And uh, for general information, you can read Jasper per server user guide. For domain related issues in chapter eight. And ad hoc is in chapter five. In chapter five, from here, you can see a related section with regard to ad hoc view domain. So that's all I want to show you in this presentation. And thank you for watching.